So um, I'm going to just go ahead and get started. <laughs> Thank you. Um, by telling you a little bit about myself professionally, uh, Benet started by saying that I work at the Ecology Center. How many of you have heard of the Ecology Center before? Woohoo! Quite a few of you. Awesome. So you know that we are an environmental nonprofit working on a range of issues from environmental justice, green chemistry, low carbon fuel standards, and environmental health, which is where I come in. Uh, most of my work is done through the Michigan Network for Children's Environment. Environmental Health. It's a coalition that the Ecology Center both founded and now leads. Um, it's comprised of health professional, health affected groups, as well as uh, environmental organizations from around the state working to protect Michigan's families and kids from toxic chemicals. So um, now that you know a little bit about me professionally, I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about myself personally. Um, I have, you may have seen my dog here earlier, his name is Benji, that yellow lab kind of running around, and my husband was kind enough to come pick him up, um, so <laughs> um, I'm married to a wonderful man named Noah, you'll hear up quite a bit about him during this presentation, we have a dog named Benji, we love spending time out, um, outdoors, I'm a big runner, I've completed four uh, full marathons including Boston, um, I've done some triathlons, lots of ha half marathons, so not only do I work in environmental health, but that's my passion my personal passion, it's my love, it's my life. So I feel really fortunate to be able to um, do what I love every single day. So um, here we go. We are going to get started by talking about a big toxic problem. So I don't know if you can see the pictures, but you'll see pictures of a baby chewing on a little teether, um, some guy shaving, a kid jumping on a bed, um, and then a little girl with cleaning products. And you're like, okay, what does that stuff have to do with toxic chemicals? Well, uh, many chemicals that are harmful to our health are added to many everyday products. So things like formaldehyde, flame retardants, phthalates, um, they're chemicals that are added to um, our materials economy and they're very toxic and can harm our health. Um, and these chemicals are not just in products, but because they're so ubiquitous in products, they have ended up in our food system, as well as our waters, our soil, our air. Um, and it just so happens that there are over 80,000 chemicals on the market today, and fewer than 200 that have been actually tested and have sa safety and health information. So largely, in many of these chemicals are unknown. Um, they're not regulated very well. Um, other countries are doing a much better job than we are here. Um, the European Union and Canada, for example, have better chemical laws in place, very comprehensive laws that make sure that chemicals are tested for safety before they enter into the market. And because of the laws that these, chemical, that these countries have, many corporations and companies and manufacturers make products um, that are safer for those countries and then send the more toxic stuff to us because we don't have those laws in place. So the next slide talks about how these chemicals are actually ending up in our bodies. So through biomonitoring and body burden testing, researchers have found um, these toxic industrial chemicals in all of our bodies. So in terms of our blood, our urine, our breast milk, our babies. So our babies are actually being born pre-polluted because many of the chemicals that we're exposed to every day cross through the placenta. And so our babies are being um, born with these chemicals in their bodies. Um, and the thing is, is that we don't know we're being exposed, and that's what's really frustrating, is you can't smell these chemicals, you can't taste them, you can't see them. And so it's this um, toxic pollution that's kind of out of sight and out of a lot of our minds because we just don't know about it. Um, what type of chemicals am I talking about? Chemicals are kind of a, um, an unknown to many people. Um, when I'm talking about formaldehyde, cadmium, mercury, lead, dioxins, arsenic, bisphenol A, phthalates, pesticides, and polybrominated diphenyl uh, ethers, and those are types of uh, flame retardants. Have you guys heard of any of these types of things before? <laughs> At least lead, right? Lead is a pretty common one, so we can meet there in the middle. What do these types of chemicals have to do with us? I'm not a chemist. Uh, probably most of you here in the audience are not chemists. They have to do with our health. So many of these chemicals that are in so many of our products and in our homes are linked to things like cancer, infertility, um, developmental disorders like uh, learning disabilities, as well as asthma, um, different types of, I think I said, cancer, thyroid problems. So I know when I look at my life and the people in my life and my family and friends, I see these uh, illnesses way too often. And it is just uh, worrisome that so many of the chemicals we're exposed to every day are linked to so many of the health illnesses that we're seeing um, in our lives and in our families. So that's the, gonna be the focus of today's uh, talk with you guys. 
Some considerations we want to take into account when we're thinking about chemical exposure is accumulation. So you may have heard of like mercury and fish, right? Have you guys heard about mercury and some types of fish? Pretty common. Well, mercury um, stays in humans and in fish for many years, even decades. Same thing like other types of chemicals. Um, they remain in our bodies for many years. Other types of chemicals are um, flushed out of our systems really quickly, like bisphenol A. Have you guys heard of BPA? Some of you. <laughs> so BPA is added to um, hard plastics, so baby bottles or plastic water bottles, for example, sometimes contain bisphenol A. Um, and that's flushed, that flushed out of the system really quickly. The problem is that most of us receive constant doses of bisphenol A, and so it's always present in our body. So a problem there. The other problem is timing. So there are times in all of our lives where we may be more or less susceptible to certain types of chemicals. So during pregnancy, uh, prenatal development, infancy, early childhood, adolescence, whatever it might be, there are times in all of our lives where we may be more vulnerable. Um, low doses. So you may think to yourself, oh, what I'm getting is such a low dose, it doesn't matter. Low doses don't matter. Research has shown us that low doses do matter. So even um, small doses of chemicals that can affect our endocrine system, so those things that can screw up our hormones, can lead to reproductive problems, different types of cancer, um, have long-term effects on our health, um, and low, mo low doses certainly matter. Synergy. So have any of you been told, if you're taking this drug, don't take that one? You know, doctors will often tell that because the interactions could be um, dangerous. We're not told that with chemicals because most of us don't know what the synergistic effects of different chemicals are. So if you're being exposed to formaldehyde and flame retardants, what happens? We don't really know, <laughs> right? And a lot of us are. We're not just exposed to one chemical at a time. We're exposed to many um, throughout our lives. Finally is the individual susceptibility, so I may be much more susceptible than uh, you may be to certain types of chemicals, and that can lead to different health problems in myself that may not affect you. Um, I'm going to stop talking about complex chemicals and start by telling you um, my story because so stories inspire people. They help give meaning to um, complex problems and um, help us understand them a little bit better. Um, I want to tell you a couple things before I start telling you my story. One is that I've never told this story to uh, such a lot of large audience before. It's a personal story, and I've only told it to a few um, close friends and some close family members, so <laughs> take it easy on me. Um, the next thing I should tell you is that um, it's, the story is about how my life may have been impacted by toxic chemicals. None of us can really know what caused our cancer, what caused our autism, what caused our infertility. But you can think that, you know, if there's not a genetic cause, there's not um, any other um, logical reason why I have this, you kind of start to think, well, what type of exposures have I had throughout my life and how is that connected to what I'm dealing with now? So I am an infertility patient. Um, Noah and I have been trying to uh, start a family for three years now. And it's been a very emotional, difficult, expensive, crazy process. Um, I am very healthy. I've always been, I shouldn't say always, for many years I've been aware of what I've exposed myself to. And so it came as a really big shock when we started to ha try st uh, starting our family that this was going to be a problem for us. Um, it was really difficult to accept for a long time. I couldn't talk about it without just crying. <laughs> Um, people would ask, like, oh, when are you going to have kids? Very innocent question. <laughs> you know, do you have any kids? And I oftentimes just couldn't answer. I would just either walk away or just start crying. Um, so it's been a really tough process, and it continues to be a tough process. Um, but I hope that I can share this story with you to talk about how my different exposures in my life may have contributed to the problem that I'm experiencing now. So I want to start from the beginning when I was a very young child. I should probably start by talking about prenatal exposure because that's when all of us first to start, you know, first be exposed to different types of chemicals and um, as they cross through the placenta. Um, I was breastfed when I was a baby, which is really good. Breastfeeding is the best um, nutrient for infants. However, there are many industrial toxic chemicals in our breast milk now because our environment is toxic and so is our breast milk. Breastfeeding is still best. I'm not telling anyone that they shouldn't breastfeed. I'm just saying that that's a source of toxic chemicals. Um, as I was an infant, my family didn't know that different types of children's products like teethers made out of plastic may contain phthalates or lead or mercury or arsenic. Why would a children's product contain those things? 
they still contain them today, not just uh, more than 20 years ago. Um, and so as I continued to grow, um, I was exposed to all kinds of different things. We had wallpaper in my house. What's wrong with wallpaper, right? Looks, seems innocent. <laughs> um, we've tested wallpaper at the Ecology Center, really high levels of phthalates. Different types of flooring have really high levels of phthalates. Vinyl blinds, which I had in my house, have really high levels of lead. And so there's just things that we um, think are very innocent and look very safe. Um, but in fact could be exposing us to so many different chemicals and that's what's frustrating is that we're really kept in the dark about these things. So I, get, I grew up and my family and I really didn't think about what we were being exposed to um, or even what I was eating really. <laughs> and so I went to college and I took a nutrition class my first semester and I started to then think about um, what am I putting in my body. I learned about high fructose corn syrup and partially hydrogenated oil and preservatives um, and so I really changed the way I was eating, um, which was good. I also started to think about what I'm eating out of. So not just the foods that I'm eating, but what am I eating out of styrofoam, out of plastic? Am I heating up plastic, which I had always done as a child? And so I started to change those things because I learned if you heat up plastic, a lot of those chemicals like bisphenol A or phthalates or whatever it might be can leach into your food and contaminate your food and then you're contaminating your body. So um, I made some changes during college and then early adulthood I continued to learn more and make changes and became more interested in this issue of um, environmental health and toxics and what we're bringing into our homes and putting into our bodies. Mind you, this is all before, way before the infertility thing. <laughs> um, so Noah and I got married um, about four or five years ago and we started a wedding registry like many couples do and so we were going out and buying stuff and as we were buying things I started really thinking about what are we purchasing? You know, is it okay for our health? Is it okay for the environment? So, for example, instead of um, purchasing a whole um, set of nonstick Teflon pans, we purchased cast iron and stainless steel. Um, we looked at um, safer alternatives for cosmetics and furniture, furniture that didn't contain flame retardants, for example. And so it took us a long time to find a mattress <laughs> that wasn't treated with uh, toxic flame retardants. And so we've really taken a, um, a big look at what we're exposing ourselves to at our homes. So um, back in 2008, I felt like I was on top of the world. I had just uh, finished studying abroad in Israel. I was about to um, graduate with my master's degree from USC. I had finished the San Francisco Marathon. I was really healthy. I was strong. I was just finished, again, I was educated, so I finished my master's program. I kind of felt like I was ready to go. <laughs> we were really excited to start our family. We figured it would be a piece of cake because we're both healthy, we're young. And then we had only been trying for a few months, and we were both pretty devastated when we learned that this is going to be a big problem for us. Um, and again, I told, said you, told you guys earlier that it was hard for us to accept, um, a lot of crying, and uh, we were referred over to a reproductive endocrinologist, and um, the whole treatment process began and continues. Um, I'm not sure if any of you have any experience with what infertility treatment entails, but a lot of it is um, pretty <laughs> intense drugs, most of which are injectable medications, so you're given shots every day. Um, I worry about what are in these medications rather than um, just the what are the consequences of the drugs themselves? What types of preservatives are in the drugs? Um, a lot of the drugs are, you know, all the needles are plastic and things like that. So it's a lot of waste, which I have a problem with because of my <laughs> environmentalism. Um, so again, it's just been a really difficult process. And I'm with the U of M um, reproductive medicine team, so it's a fantastic group to be with. But it's tough, and it, um, I think it's going to continue to be tough for us. But I continue to learn more, and um, I feel empowered to help everyone else um, understand the connections between not just infertility and toxic chemicals, but cancer, developmental disorders, and many other um, health problems that are very common today. So I said this earlier, but we're really being kept in the dark about this problem. It's not something that most people are aware of because we can't see it, taste it, or smell it. It's not an obvious problem. When you go into a home that smells clean, for example, it just seems like it's clean and fresh, right? You wouldn't think about formaldehyde in furniture or flame retardants or arsenic or lead. You don't just think about those things when you go into a home or when you're buying things for your kids. 
Um, and it's something that we really need to start thinking about because it's a basic human right for all of us to have bodies that are healthy and free of the toxic effects of industrial chemicals. And it's not happening right now. And so I really want to urge all of you to start thinking about what you're exposing yourselves to, what you're exposing your families to, and what we continue to put into our planet because it's not just us. Um, and this story is not about me. I used my story to help bring meaning to this very overwhelming toxic problem. But this story really is about the health of you and your family, future families and children, um, the health of our soil, our water, our air, our wildlife. Um, so polar bears are up there and you might be like, oh, polar bears, yeah, it's global warming. Polar bears have flame retardants in their bodies. Um, and they're not the ones sitting on couches all day long. We are. <laughs> but it's our earth is so polluted with these toxic industrial chemicals that we need to really start making some changes. Um, and there are things that we can do. It may seem like this huge overwhelming problem because it kind of is, but there are things that we can all do in our personal life to make improvements and to really help shape the global picture. Um, the very first thing you can do is start by learning more because like me, it took many years for me to get to where I am now and to have a really broad, great understanding of what toxic chemicals can do to our health and our world. Um, raise awareness, so talk to other people about this. Talk to your family and your friends about why you're making um, purchases for safer products. Um, consume less stuff, so the more things you bring into your home, the more likely you are to be exposed to different types of chemicals. Um, visit HealthyStuff.org. That's our website. <laughs> We've tested over 7,000 consumer products for toxic chemicals. So the Ecology Center runs that uh, site, and it's super helpful and kind of a fun place to check out um, things like Christmas lights, children's car seats, purses, dog toys, um, lots of different things in terms of what their contamination level is. And then finally, vote with your dollars to support organizations and companies that make safe products, or safer products at least. And then I encourage you, once you've made those small changes, to start making some big changes because that's what's really going to affect um, the global marketplace because that's what's wrong here is our mater materials economy is so toxic. Um, chemical manufacturers and huge corporations are in our elected officials' offices practically every day. They're strong, they're powerful, they have lots of resources. And so it really is going to take all of us speaking up and not accepting this um, toxic fate of ours. Um, they whine that, you know, it's going to cost too much to make these changes. It's going to ruin the economy. And while they continue whining, we're left paying these huge medical bills and the cost um, with the loss of our health. So um, some big changes you can make include speaking up, um, advocating for more protective policies. Um, our organization works on state policy at the works on policy at the state level as well as the federal level. So that's a great way for you to get involved. Um, we have an advocacy day in Lansing coming up on October 18th. Um, you don't have to have um, any experience in environmental health. You just have to have an interest, and you're welcome to join us. So you can come talk to me afterwards if you're interested in uh, getting more involved and learning more. That's all I have for you today. You probably can't see that, but my email address is up there if you want to get in touch with me. It's just jennifer at ecocenter.org. So thank you all. I hope that I've helped you uh, learn how you can make changes in your life and why it's important. Um, so thank you all for allowing me to be here. <laughs>